Right, welcome back. Uh, time to get our feet wet and just take a look around Keybase and just see where everything is. Um, Keybase, uh, they've uh, with a 9.5 update, they've kind of simplified things a little bit, which is great because it can be quite a daunting DAW to work with this. Um, in comparison to a lot of the other um, popular DAWs, especially for electronic music producers, um, I mean, in comparison to stuff like Ableton or FL Studio or, or whatever, um, Cubase is definitely um, stacked with features. A lot of the stuff that you won't be using, but they can be quite confusing and quite um, uh, quite daunting when you see all these different options and stuff. Uh, especially the scoring functions. You have some fairly advanced um, tools for video editing, post-production and stuff, um, which you won't really be using. So it's nice that they've kind of um, simplified this a little bit more. Uh, you can now do pretty much everything in one window. Um, we are going to look at through all the other windows that you can open up as well, though. Um, start firstly with um, uh, our F keys. Uh, they are default shortcuts to um, different windows in Cubase. I'm going to run through every single one of those, and then we'll come back to this project window and uh, just discuss everything. So if you're on a, a Macintosh, um, there's something that uh, you will want to be doing when working in Cubase is open up your system preferences and just head over to keyboard. Um, you're going to want to just turn this on, use F1, F2, etc. keys as standard function keys. Otherwise, when you are hitting F1 and F2 uh, and so on, you're going to be turning up the brightness of your screen or the volume or something like that. So just turn that on. If you need to adjust the volume on a laptop or whatever, just use function um, and the volume controls F10 or F11, whatever. So once that's done, um, let's just go through. Um, F1 will be your manual. That'll pop up. We're not going to bother going into that now. Uh, F2 will bring up your transport. This is, however, fairly redundant now since we have a transport included in the bottom as well. This is pretty much exactly what you have here. F3 will bring up the full mixer. Um, you have different um, tabs that you can go through for the mixer. We will come back and look at uh, this in more detail when we get into actually making um, mixing the track. Um, but Cubase has compressors and EQs built into every single channel now. Um, again, like I said, don't worry about the hardware uh, functionality over here because that is um, particular to my uh, sound card um, only. Um, so F4 will bring up the connections that we looked at. Uh, F5 will bring up our media bay, uh, which can take some time, especially with a large library like I do, like I have. Um, so we're not going to bother too much with this now. We have a, a new file browser in Cubase as well, which I actually prefer using um, just because it is not quite as um, slow as what media browser can be sometimes. Media Browser does have some great functions where you can tag um, samples in your library so it makes it easier to search for stuff in big libraries, but um, uh, we'll leave that for another day. That is, uh, can get quite advanced as well. Um, F6 will be your automation panel. Uh, we won't use this too much. There are some handy functions in here, but um, we're not going to be bothering with this too much. F7, this is a good one to know. It's a new function in, in Cubase. They've had offline processing before, but it's um, become quite advanced now um, and really useful. Uh, you'll see later on when we actually get into writing some of the track. Um, you can use this to apply effects directly to an audio file um, rather than actually adding them as an insert on uh, in your track. So, uh, i.e., you could apply a distortion directly onto a single clap and have only that clap have a specific distortion on it and so on without having to bounce a new file. We'll cover this in more detail as we go. Uh, if it is your video player, don't worry about that. We won't be needing that. You can cycle through your tool tools um, with F9 and F10. Um, you can also use keys 1 through 7 to select tools that you might need. Um, then uh, F11 will just give you your desktop. F12 is your audio performance. We have this all. Um, 
it, because this is so customizable now um, with this new 9.5 version, you can pretty much put anything or almost anything anywhere on this this layout. So you don't really need to open up a lot of those windows anymore. Um, let's just quickly go through here. You have a toolbar along the top. Uh, if you right click anywhere on that toolbar, you'll be able to add and um, hide certain functionality. Um, mine is probably not the default. I've probably added a few extra bits and pieces in here. Um, so if there's anything missing and you can't find it, always just go right click and you can kind of look through here to see what uh, is available to you. Um, we're not going to go through uh, these all shortcuts to the windows and stuff that I've just showed you as well. Um, these would be your master mute switches, solo, uh, read and write for automation. Uh, that will apply to all your channels. Uh, automation types, um, your toolbar over here. You can Again, you can access that with a right click as well. Um, and you'll see now, this is why I asked you in the previous... Um, lesson to deactivate that right click thing because now you have access to a whole bunch of other processes and plugins and all sorts of stuff from here right um quantize settings all that stuff we'll come to that as we as we go uh, through the track um i did show you this um setup over here if you hit that little uh, down area you can set up your lower zones and uh, overview line I normally have overview deactivated, you don't really need it. The info line I find is quite important. Once your project's set up, you can turn the status line off as well. Um, then you have these keys as well. These will hide and um, show the three main zones, um, which we are going to come to next. Um, let's just also move down into the time timeline at the top here this is not always by default bars and beats um if you right click and remember right clicking on anything in cubase which should normally bring up a menu uh, that'll let you customize it so you have options here for seconds time code if you're working with video but we want to be on bars and beats which is what it is now so if you're seeing something weird there just right click on it make sure that you've got bars and beats selected um all right, you can see we've got a, a, um, a completely blank space here now. I have uh, shortcut keys set up, but we'll, we'll use these. So my shortcut keys will bring up um, the lower zone and left zone and so on. So we're going to show, uh, show all of them right now uh, and just talk about these different zones. Um, the left side is probably the most important. This is the inspector, um, the inspector window. Uh, you're not going to be seeing anything now because we don't actually have any tracks inserted there. So let's add a audio track. I'm also going to add a instrument track. And this will prompt you to select which instrument you want. Uh, we'll just go with Retrolog for now. We're not going to be doing anything with this just yet. I'm just adding them so we can actually uh, see the functionality enabled here on the on the side, uh, so I can just walk you through it. Um, the inspector will be all the attributes for the selected track that you're working on. You'll see it changes from my audio track to Retrolog over here. This one you can see differs slightly as it's an instrument. There's a few extra extra things available to you there. Let's look at the audio one again though. Um, once again, right click again, important. Just remember that because everything you can customize, um, right click. Otherwise, um, you'll also be seeing these little, uh, cog little icons, um, set up that you can click on and then you can add and remove, um, sections that you don't normally use like track versions. I very seldomly use, we'll just disable that. Um, we can disable, let's say, I'm not really interested in the notepad. Let's get rid of that. So we can just streamline this a little bit. Um, you can switch between sections, uh, your inserts, effects and stuff. You can get directly from this section. Yeah. Uh, you'll see every time I click, it minimizes the one that was open and opens up a new one. Um, you can, uh, at least on an Apple hold down, um, command 
and clicking on another one will open both of them at the same time and then you can uh, scroll down just in case you want to have more information available to you there. The visibility tab, um, this is where you can hide and show tracks. Um, you have tracks and zones. Don't worry about the zones too much. This just lets you lock um, certain tracks on the left or right hand side of the mixer window. Cool. Um, a lot of the stuff we will cover later on again, but I just kind of want to do a quick run through of everything just so you know where everything is. And um, we will most likely revisit most of this as we get stuck in with the track. So coming down to the bottom here, you have your lower zone. Um, that was the left zone that we were on now, the lower zone. You can have a mix console in here. It's a slightly condensed version of the full mixer, which you have when you're up there. Um, you can switch between inserts, sends, and faders. You also have your editors here. Um, so an editor will be whenever you have a part selected, it will default to whatever, whichever editor you need for um, that specific track. Uh, if you have an audio part, you'll see it'll be an audio editing window over here. And back to MIDI, there's your MIDI. Um, you also have sampler controls down here, which we'll come to later, and your chord pads, which we'll also cover later on. Um, now let's just take a look at the right zone down here. Yeah, you have a media browser, so you have the built-in Steinberg content, um, which for the most part is pretty subpar, but you will, uh, you can go through the stuff and check it out. There might be something useful for you. And yeah, these are the libraries that ship with um, Cubase. Uh, Patch Up Pro is uh, an add-on extra that I an extra add-on that I that I've bought. Um, there's a bunch of loops and stuff in here. They might be handy to play around with. Um, for the most part, uh, the only thing that I'm really ever interested in in this media section is the file browser. Um, so you'll see this is my um, audio library. And um, you can quickly scoot around your hard drives looking for um, audio files. And it's, it's nice that you can now just um, audition files right in your project window and just drag them out. Um, also in this section here, you have a uh, VSTi rack. So uh, just a quick explanation of this. There's two ways of adding instruments. Um, everything, when you add a track the way I did an instrument track earlier, they'll appear on the top of this line. Um, there's another way of adding them, which is the year. Uh, I would only recommend adding them like this when you have... Um, like sampler instruments that have multiple outputs and um, you can add a groove agent for example. My apologies, I just added another instrument track. Um, if you add onto the rack, add a rack instrument. Yes, there we go. So adding a rack instrument um, gives you uh, a, a separate instrument channel, but it, it only takes automation, not notation. If you want to add notes, um, so send notes to this, uh, you would have to create new MIDI channels um, by going here, yeah, adding a MIDI channel, and then sending it to your groove agent that you've just created. Now, the only reason to do this is when you have, um, like I said, a sampler instrument um, like Groove Agent where you have multiple drum samples or whatever, and you want your one instrument to be playing different patterns of MIDI. So you could have a MIDI pattern for just the kick drum, a MIDI pattern for the snare drum, a MIDI pattern for the hi-hat, but you would only be using one instance of Groove Agent. So that's, this just allows you to spread out your, your MIDI channels so that everything's a little bit more organized. Um, for the most part, mm, computers are, are fast enough these days that I would actually just open up a Groove Agent uh, just for one um, sample instead of rather loading in loads of them. Um, 
it really depends on your preferences. But that is there if you want to do it that way. Uh, I prefer to just um, right click and or add an audio track from here. Just add a instrument track instead. Uh, just makes more sense to me that way. So I'm just going to remove this instrument. There we go. And remove this folder. Okay. Um, lastly, let's just look along the bottom here. Um, you have your transport here, uh, your loop. Um, you can set your loop by dragging out these little triangles here. Turn your loop on and off. Uh, in Cubase, if you set your loop like that and then drag the end past the uh, start point, uh, you'll see it'll change color and this will be an exclusion loop. So um, you'll see if we play, it'll automatically jump the loop so you can actually exclude sections of your track by doing that. And there we go, that's the normal loop again. Um, play, pause, record, or play, stop, record. That's all pretty, pretty self-explanatory. Um, again, you can modify this if you want um, with a whole bunch of other different things. You have uh, auto quantize over here, um, which will automatically quantize notes um, while you're playing them. Um, and your record modes, your audio record mode, um, we're not going to bother too much about that. And MIDI record modes, um, you just have options of replacing or making new parts. And I prefer to have the new parts so that you don't actually um, lose anything. Sometimes setting it to merge is, is useful, but uh, for the most part, I just add new parts and then you can actually paste them together if you need to merge them. Um, let's just check if there's anything else. Uh, Set up transfer. No, we're not going to bother with that. There's a metronome button over there. You can click that. Adds your metronome. Uh, there's a shortcut to that. It's just C. If you hit C at any time, it'll turn it, toggle it on and off. Um, and then lastly, this little button in the left hand corner here, I just wanted to cover. If you ever have. Um, Issues recording MIDI uh, where you're finding your notes are delaying a lot. Um, I spoke about this earlier with the um, ASIO Guard, the plugin delay compensation. Uh, turning this on will essentially deactivate any plugins um, running on your channels that are adding latency to the system. So if you have, uh, for example, a mastering processor running on your bus, uh, your output, um, stereo out or whatever, um, those often take up quite a bit of, um, uh, of of latency, so the whole system slows down to accommodate for that one plugin, and that can cause recording to be a little bit difficult um, at the best of times. So turning that off will let everything just go back to its normal latency. You'll be able to record your parts. Uh, your track won't sound great without the effects, but once you're done, you can just whack it back on and everything will be back to normal again. So just something to bear in mind if you ever have that uh, that issue. And I think that pretty much uh, covers it. I think from here we're going to, um, I want to just take a look at some of the tracks in detail and then we will start um, um, start adding some content and get our track underway. Cool. See you then. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.